there is this effort to try and understand what happened uh, to Prigozhin, or at least to that plane. American intelligence now suggesting, well, there's two theories. Could it have been a bomb? Could it have been a missile? Where do we stand on that? Yeah, I mean, everyone's looking at the uh, wreckage and what we've got in the public record. The, nobody quite believes what the Russians will eventually say about it, because that probably will be manipulated. But there are, there are equally plausible, maybe it was a bomb, maybe it was a missile. I personally think it was probably a missile, just from what we know about the wreckage. But we'll find out a bit more, probably, in the weeks to come. But it won't be quick. It'll be a few weeks before all this stuff comes together with the intelligence agencies in the United States and, and uh, Britain. OK. Uh, and, of course, working out who is actually looking at this uh, wreckage in order to see uh, what they... Well, what agenda they might have... Exactly, ..as, to, as yeah. to what they come up with. Uh, meanwhile, of course, the Wagner Group effectively leaderless now. What happens to that? Yeah. This is an interesting picture. Have a look at this man, Andrei Avayanov. Um, he is the uh, head of what you would call the Dirty Tricks uh, Department of the GRU, which is military intelligence, Russian military intelligence, and they've been responsible for the Skripal poisonings and the Litvinenko poisonings and so on. Um, this man was at the Africa-Russia summit in Petersburg on the 27th, 28th of uh, July, and people wondered why he was there. He was talking to African leaders, and it looks as if President Putin is, would like to put him in charge of Wagner in Africa. Because whatever else happens to the Wagner Group, it will not stop its operations in Africa. It might change a bit, it might change its name. Um, I'm guessing about that, but we'll see. But it looks as if Putin is trying to exert control over what, what there is of Wagner um, through the GRU, through the uh, military security apparatus. Um, the point is that the, what the Wagner is doing in Africa is so important to Russia, it's so profitable to Russia and to Putin, that they won't want to let that go, whatever else happens to Wagner elsewhere in the world. Mm, it'll just be about finding that, uh, that next leader, but, of course, Wagner becoming more accountable to Russia in that yeah. process. Of course, while all of this has been going on uh, with Prigozhin, the war in Ukraine has been uh, continuing, uh, particularly around Crimea. Yeah, it's getting to be a very dramatic stage now, Bell. There's been um, an incursion. Uh, the, the Ukrainians have crossed the river, uh, the Dnipro River, um, north of Kherson, just near Novokovka. And there's something going on there today where a Russian company, it's about 100 men, looks as if they're completely surrounded and are just being destroyed by artillery. That would not do their morale any good whatsoever for other forces. More important than that, more significant than that in the scheme of things, Crimea. The, the Ukrainians have attacked Crimea a lot this week and they're trying to close Crimea down destroy the air defence, attack everything in Crimea to prevent the Russians using this as the hub for all of the forces that they would like to go north because the essence, the essence of the, uh, the whole offensive now is on Tokmak. We're, we're now pretty clear that what the uh, Ukrainians are trying to do, I call this Route 1, we weren't sure if they'd really go for this, but they are going for it, um, they've deployed all of their heavy stuff, all of their armour, including the armour that we've given them, the Challenger tanks with the 82nd Air Assault Brigade. They've taken Robertine, which is the high ground, and they're moving towards Tokmak. Now, Tokmak will be a really tough nut. The Russians may well flood it. Um, they're creating another catastrophe, another humanitarian disaster, as and when the Ukrainians get there. But they're going for Tokmak, and they're within artillery range of it now, and they're trying to really push it. And 50 miles further east at Storomyorsk, they've taken that, and they're pushing outwards uh, from Storomyorsk. So these two avenues of attack are what the Ukrainians are now concentrating on, and they've brought everything forward. So all of their assault brigades are now involved in these two lines of attack. They've got more resources behind, but the things they prepared specifically for the breakthrough are now all in play. So this is the all-or-nothing moment for them. We'll see how they get on in the next two to three weeks. All right, very interesting. Lots for us uh, to keep an eye on with you. Thanks very much, Michael.